Okay, today we're going to be talking about the Syrian civil war to understand a little bit more about what's going on in refugee when we're reading about Mahmoud's story. This is probably the um, one that is most current, but probably the most confusing situation to learn about. Um, so before we get going, let's learn a little bit about um, just Syria in general, because I feel like um, I don't know a lot about Syria um, outside of the fact that there was a civil war there. There is a civil war there. It's still going on. Um, uh, I don't know much about it outside that fact. Um, so I looked up some facts about it. So it says Syria is an ancient Middle Eastern country that stood as a gateway between Asia and the Western world. Over the centuries, it's been home to Roman, Greek, Arab, and Turkish empires. Syria does not actually have an official religion, and its constitution guarantees freedom of religion. However, Islam influences all areas of uh, Syrian life, and the constitution does state that Syria's president must be Muslim. Um, a lot of Syrians come to the United States. The celebrities with Syrian roots include Jerry Seinfeld, Steve Jobs, Paula Abdul, uh, Murray F. Murray Abraham, and hockey player Brandon Saad. Uh, Syria is slightly more than one and a half size times the size of Pennsylvania. So you can see it up here on this map. Oops, sorry. <laughs> you can see it up here on this map. Um, it's right up here, right above Africa. Um, so it's just slightly bigger than Pennsylvania. And the population of Syria is currently... Um, just over 17 million people. Okay, so let's talk about the Syrian civil war and everything that caused it. Um, so this all started um, really in 2000, but it got big in 2011. Um, so in 2000, Bashar al-Assad became president of, president of Syria, and he took over for his father. Um, political scientists call the Assad family dictators. They really aren't what we would think of as presidents. Um, and at this time, um, Syrians were really hopeful when Bashar took office because they were like, oh, he's going to be a lot better than his father. He's a lot more progressive. Um, unfortunately, Bashar was a lot worse. Um, so they were already complaining about high unemployment, gover government corruption, and lack of political freedom, and those things only got worse under Bashar's rule. Um, so in 2011, there were pro-democracy protests in a lot of Middle, Middle Eastern and African countries, and this really inspired the Syrian people, and so they started having pro-democracy demonstrations. They wanted to get rid of Bashar al-Assad and have a democracy in their country. Um, unfortunately, the government did not like that, and they responded with deadly force. Um, they sent out soldiers with um, tear gas and guns, and they um, fired into the crowd. So they did not... They do not have the right to protest over there in Syria. Um, and the government um, really cracked down on these protests. Um, so that made the people unhappy, obviously. So the people responded by having more protests. And as the people had more protests, the government responded by being even more um, forceful toward them and the people got even more violent. So this started to turn um, into a civil war between the government and its people very quickly um, because that violence just started brewing. And these pictures on the left here are actual pictures from protests from 2011 in Syria. So as the protests started um, increasing in size and strength and the government was responding with heavier force. Um, they even started having tanks and uh, with heavy artillery and attack helicopters cutting off uh, water and electricity and power lines like telephone lines to certain neighborhoods where the protests were being organized. Um, so in response to this, some groups um, groups of protesters started to 
arm themselves with guns and fight back against the government. Um, in June of, I believe this was still in 2011, uh, Syrian troops and tanks moved into the northern town of Jasir al shugar sending a stream of thousands of refugees fleeing into Turkey. Uh, so keep in mind, not all of these people are protesters. Not all of these people are um, with the government. So some of these people are just innocent people and they're being caught in the crossfire and they are having to flee into a different country for their lives. Um, so there wasn't an exact moment when it started to turn from peaceful to um, protesters turning into militarized rebellion, um, but it started to be that these like armed attacks were becoming more and more common. And by September of 2011, there were armed rebel militias regularly engaging in combat with government troops in Syria. Um, so there was the Free Syrian Army, and they had actually claimed leadership over the, um, like all of the armed rebels in Syria. Um, however, that wasn't necessarily true, but they said that they were the ones who were organizing everything. So you can see that just the average everyday people probably don't want any part in this, but they're being caught up in all this fighting. Um, so this was still going on in the summer of 2015. And throughout the years, uh, different countries have taken interest and sent over uh, money, uh, weapons, troops. Um, so in the summer of 2015, Russia began to take a more active role in this conflict, and they sent troops and military equipment and launched airstrikes against Syria. Um, so at first, they, they said that they were targeting a terrorist group that had sprung up amid all this chaos, but... Um, it was pretty obvious to everyone soon that they were really on the government's team. They were on Bashar al-Assad's team, and they were just trying to help Bashar al-Assad secure Syria and try and get it back for him. Um, keep in mind, too, that 2016 is when the, um, the story of Mahmoud takes place. So this is around the time that we see... Um, that we'll be kind of reading about um, Mahmoud and his story in Refugee. Um, so then in 2016, and this is, like I said, this is Mahmoud and his story, Russia, uh, Russian and Syrian government forces um, started bombing Aleppo. They started bombing their own city, well, Syria. They started bombing their own city, and they made no attempt to avoid civilian casualties um, to try and they were just trying to bomb out the rebels. They had warplanes just dropping cluster bombs, incendiary bombs, so that's those big fire bombs, um, and they targeted medical facilities, search and rescue teams, and aid workers. Um, so that was really horrible. Those actions were condemned by human rights groups, um, but they did continue until from September until December when the rebel groups finally gave up. Um, so this was one of the most horrible parts when the Syrian government just started bombing their own cities. Um, so this conflict is actually still happening today. Um, and here are some of the results from that. Over 10 million Syrians have been forced outside of their homes due to the civil war. They have become either internally displaced, so they're still in Syria, but they don't have a home anymore, or they have left the country altogether. Um, the population of Syria used to be around 21 million, and now it has dropped to 17 million. Of the 4.5 million people who have fled Syria since 2011, over 75% of them are women and children. Since the beginning of Syria's civil war in 2011, life expectancy has fallen by 20 years. The Syrian civil war is the worst humanitarian crisis in the 21st century. 
Turkey has over 2.5 Syrian refugees, more than any other country. Lebanon has 1.1 Syrian refugees, which constitutes about one in five people in the country. Since the Syrian crisis started in March 2011, over 250,000 people have died in Syria. That is over 130 people killed every day of every week for the past five years. As of 2016, Syrians are the largest refugee population in the world. This is the worst exodus since the Rwandan genocide 20 years ago. More than half of all Syrian refugees are under the age of 18. High-income countries, including Russia, Japan, Singapore, and South Korea, have offered zero resettlement, resettlement places for Syrian refugees, so they are not taking in any Syrian refugees. The Syrian Observ Observatory for Human Rights has documented the deaths of 387,118 people by December of 2020, among them 116,911 civilians. This toll did not include 205,300 people who it said were missing and presumed dead, including 880,000, sorry, 88,000 civilians believed to have died of torture in government-run prisons. Um, so like I said, in 2020, this conflict has still not ended. Um, Bashar al-Assad has regained control of Syria. Um, but it is very unstable and anything could happen at this point.